Yo, yo, welcome back to the channel. I figured I'd give you guys another tutorial today. And a few weeks ago, I got this question from Powell Onorin. He was asking if I knew how to do a liquid swipe effect inside of Envision Studio. And as you can see, I replied, I'm not exactly sure how to do this inside of Envision Studio, um, frankly, because I don't think it's possible, at least if I understand what he's asking correctly. But I had done something similar inside of Principle, so that's what this tutorial is gonna be about. I'm gonna demo a liquid swipe animation inside of Principle. And here's what it looks like. It's really cool, it's really fluid, and can really help elevate your design. So hopefully you guys find this useful, you find it valuable, and you can apply some of these tips and tricks to your own designs. So for this interaction, we're actually gonna be starting inside of Figma. I've really been enjoying the Figma to Principle workflow. I think it's working really well for me. Um, I recently made the full switch from Sketch to Figma as like my main UI design tool. But uh, Figma's prototyping abilities are a bit limited when you get into these more detailed um, animations and swipe and scroll based interactions. And Principle is usually a tool that I, that I opt to prototype these things in. Just because the driver window makes it super easy to do anything swipe or scroll based, gives you a lot of control. But a quick overview of the UI. Um, this should look very familiar to you guys if you are Twitter users. I basically copied their layout here. Um, but just visual design wise, um, everything's on an eight point grid. So if I turn on my grid, you'll notice everything aligns to this eight point grid pretty nicely. Text aligns to a four point baseline grid. Um, but you'll notice there's 16 pixels of uh, margin on the left and right. And like, if you, if you notice these components, they're all divisible by four or eight. So this tab bar is 56 pixels of height. This one's 48 pixels. Then we get the out of the box Apple status bar, which is 44 pixels. And then each of these uh, list items here is 88 pixels. And here are my components over here. Um, I just made components just to make my life a little easier and keep everything organized. Um, Cause as you'll see, when I expand the width of this artboard, you'll see that there are actually three pages of content. So just by looking at this, you can kind of picture what's gonna happen um, from an interaction perspective. The user is gonna be able to swipe from page to page, and as they swipe, this tab area is going to dynamically update depending on which page we're looking at. So right now the user is looking at content that was curated you know, for him. So this is that for you tab. Then they're gonna swipe left, and as they page left, this indicator dot is going to dynamically move over and sit right behind the trending tab, which is also going to increase in opacity. Right now it's set to 50% opacity for inactive. Once the tab is active, it's gonna increase to 100%. So that's more or less the interaction. Um, and again, I just use components to make my life a lot easier. So again, if I make like a global change here, it's gonna dynamically update on all the components, or at least on the ones that I didn't override. So yeah, that's, that's a little pre-work that I did in advance. So let's just set this artboard back to 375. This was my iPhone 10s. So we're almost ready to import this to principle, but I actually tried this in advance and there's one thing I wanna do before I do that. For whatever reason, these, um, these tabs, right, with their differences in opacity, they weren't importing really correctly to principle. So one thing I'm gonna do in advance, um, just here in Figma, is I'm gonna make these all a pure white. So I'm gonna bump their opacity all up to 100. And I don't know why that didn't update. Let's just reset the overrides. So these are all pure white. And I know right now the hierarchy is not as good with these as a pure white, because we can't really tell which is the active tab. I mean, yeah, we have this indicator, but we had more hierarchy before when these were faded out a bit but we're gonna just fix that once we get into principle. So for now, that's fine. And this is ready to import to principle. So I'm gonna select this artboard, head into principle. I already have my artboard set up at the same exact dimensions, 375 by 812. And let's import that artboard. So I'm just gonna do import selected frames. And here we're looking at our design inside of principle. And notice how my preview window is over here. Um, usually when I'm working on a mobile app inside of principle, I like the side-by-side -side view. So it kind of snaps your preview window right here. So let's just revisit what we're trying to do. So the user is gonna swipe on the content here. And as we swipe, we want this tab area to dynamically update. So depending on which tab we're on, 
it's going to have the this little purple circle indicator and we're actually going to change the opacity of these tabs up here um, to correspond with the active tab so like i said what we're going to do now is just bring these back to an inactive state so let's make their opacity of the inactive tabs around 50 percent opacity and now we are ready to start driving some elements but before we do that um, since we're going to be paging, right, this is going to be sort of like page scrolling. These pages are going to like snap into place. I'm going to take page one, page two, and page three and group them. And let's just call this content. And under the horizontal driver controls here, I'm going to select page. So now notice when I try to go to page, it's like almost happening but the page isn't snapping into place. And that's because we have to define our page size. And we do that by just grabbing this page bounding box and setting it to the size of our artboard. So now when we go to page, everything snaps into place correctly. So that would be step one. And now from an interaction perspective, as a user, when I page to the second page, this tab construct is going to dynamically update. So what I'm gonna do is open the driver window. And since we set driver controls on our content paging, notice we have some driver controls for the scroll exposition of our content page group that we made. So basically when we page one page, which is gonna be just the size of our artboard. So we're gonna start at zero and go to 375. This header area is gonna update. So what we wanna do is first let's keyframe the tabs opacity. So we have three pages here. So I'm actually just gonna um, keyframe this guy, this guy, this guy. We don't have to worry about these guys because I didn't design screens for them. We're going to keyframe their opacity. And then when I get to point uh, 375, let's add a, let's see, let's, let's change the opacity of for you to 50 right, because that one's going to decrease in opacity, but this one's going to increase to 100% opacity. So watch how that one changes, right, because the hierarchy is changing a bit. And then when I get to 375 plus another 375, which is, oh God, don't make me do math on the spot. What is that, 750? I hope that's right. 75 plus 75 is 150. 300 plus 300 is 600, 600 plus 150, <laughs> 750, I'm so smart. So we're gonna go over to 750 and then over this distance, this one is actually gonna decrease in opacity to 50 and then news is going to change to 100. So there we go, that's like the first step and we can preview that. So these tabs are changing depending on which, um, which page we're looking at. So that would be the first step. So now for the fun part, we actually want to create this liquid paging effect with this little indicator that sits behind the active tab. So to achieve this, um, we just wanna morph this little indicator dot a little bit as we swipe. So. How I'm gonna do this is when I get halfway between the beginning of the page and the end of the page, so let's do some more math now. What's 375 divided by two? And I did this in advance so I know the answer, otherwise I wouldn't. It's, uh, it's about 187. It's 187.5, but we'll just make it 187. And then I'm gonna keyframe a few things for this uh, this little indicator tab. I want to keyframe its scale and I want to keyframe its width. And let's just add a keyframe at the start as well for those two properties. So when I get to here, oh, actually, we also want to keyframe its X position, obviously, because it's going to slide over. So let's keyframe its scale, width, and X position. So basically when I get halfway between zero and 375, which is the next page, so when I get about here, 
I'm just gonna, with this indicator selected, I'm gonna move it over. So it's kind of like right in between for you and trending. So it's like, we're indicating that it's on its way there. And then when we get about here, let's take its scale, since we keyframe that property, let's take its scale down to like 0.7. So you see, as I start swiping, it's scaling down just a little bit. And let's also increase its width to something like, actually, you know what, let's, let's be a little more exact. Let's, uh, let's do times, I don't know, 1.5 maybe? 1.5 times its width, so. Let's see what's happening now. See how this is sort of morphing? And I'm actually just gonna scale it down even more. So let's take it scale down to like 0 0.5. And you know what, let's just increase its width even more. Let's do like, it was originally 32 times two. So let's do, let's do 64 just for the effect. Let's just position this where we want, somewhere right in between those two. So you see it's kind of, it's already feeling a bit liquid as we swipe. And then on the second half, so once we get to 375, let's just undo pretty much everything we just did. So let's take its width back to 32. Let's take its scale back to one, and then let's just move it over. So it's behind trending at that point. So somewhere around there, I'm kind of just eyeballing this. But that is looking really freaking cool. And it's even more fun when you preview it in real time. So when I page, See how when I get to like a halfway point, it's it's like stretching and scaling down. And then when I get to the, the end of that interaction, it just kind of bounces right into place. And we get this really fun liquid paging animation. So now we want to repeat the process for when we page over to news. So we, we went from for you to trending. Now we want to go from trending to news. So in our driver window, we basically just want to do exactly what we just did. So let's when we get in between 375 and 750 so the difference between those is around 562 ish that's like the midway point let's just scale this down to one half let's double the width like we did before and let's just move it over right in between those two so that's like the first part, that's the halfway point. And then when we get to the end, let's just undo everything again. So let's change the width back to 32, let's change the scale back to one, and then we'll just move over the indicator. So it's behind news now. Awesome. So now we can page in a very fun kind of fluid way. And I'm actually just now realizing that this news tab is actually fading in too early. So you see how it starts fading in when I swipe to trending? It's like getting a little brighter. And we wanna wait until we're swiping from trending to news for that to fade in. And that's a very simple fix. We can just go back into our timeline here and find, uh, I think, yeah, the news tab, which is tab three. And right now we have it fading in from position zero to 750. All we want to do is bring this first keyframe up to here to 375 so that its opacity is only changing over that duration. So that has fixed our issue. And that is the interaction. So hopefully you guys learned something. It's just like a cool little fun way to bring some more interactivity into this page swiping interaction. And hopefully you can apply some of these tips and tricks into your own designs. 
you guys found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, and also let me know in the comments if you have any other interactions that you'd like me to demo on this channel. One thing I forgot to mention, in the description below, I've included a survey. So later this year, I'm dropping my UI animation course, and I'm trying to find out a bit about what you guys actually want in that course. Um, so that survey's below, I'd really appreciate if you took like two seconds to fill that out. Um, also, if you provide your email, whoever provides their email, I'm going to give a discount when the course actually is released. So hopefully that's soon. But yeah, that's it for now. I will talk to you guys in the next video.